Let's talk a little bit about the very unusual events that have happened here in July and August. Um, starting around the 22nd of July, here's the summit of Kilauea Visitor Center. We're right up in here. Um, this is Crater Rim Drive coming here, and then you turn and go down the chain of craters road by all these craters. This just lit up with earthquakes on the 22nd. We were getting, we have locatable earthquakes and the earthquakes that are too small to locate. So locatable earthquakes were going at about 40 per hour. And uh, we had a lot of magnitude threes in there as well and a bunch of magnitude twos. And then we had about four or five times as many unlocated earthquakes. So we're really looking at something like 150, 200 earthquakes an hour going on in this thing and and quite a few people if you lived up here you felt these things in late july um so this lit up and then it migrated down and we have we have the east rift zone which is the zone events out in here broken into three pieces there's the upper east rift zone that goes like this direction then the middle east rift zone goes way out and then sorry there are two pictures in here so you can't see it and then there's a lower east rift zone down in Puna where people live but these were the first earthquakes that turned the corner here. And until this time, since 2018, we hadn't seen magma make it back into the Middle East Rift Zone. So it punched its way from the Upper East Rift Zone into the Middle East Rift Zone during this event. And a shallow dike was in place. Oops. And you can go see the impact of that if you go out to the Monolulu parking area and see the offset curbing and road that's out there. So this dike was in place sitting in between these two guys. And then the really interesting stuff started to happen. So that whole event was over on about the 25th. And then this is a satellite image using radar from outer space um, to actually look at deformation. And so there's a couple different ways that you can measure things. Uh, one is to use lasers, and you time the laser, and you bounce it off things, and you just know how fast it's going, so you know how far it is by how long it takes to go down and come back. Um, this is a little different. With the radar, we, don't really, we really can't time it. But what we can do is we can check and see if the ground is the same size as it was before, because when the, the satellite flies over, the waves should be in phase. So if you think of waves that go like this, they should match up identically. And instead, what we're seeing, if the ground changes, is we're seeing the waves shift. And that shift, we can actually measure the number of wavelengths it shifts. And so we're measuring by how many wavelengths this shifts. This has this ugly physics and math component to it. <laughs> but, but anyway, it's a very clever idea. And so we use these colors in here to do this. But what it shows in here, I didn't put the one of the dike, but there was a very strong signal when the dike was formed in here. But magma started just leaking down into the Middle East Rift Zone. So past Makwapui Crater and out by Nepal Crater, we had this circular uplift. And so this was two satellite passes, one on the 7th of August, or one on the 26th of July and one on the 7th of August. And this is the 7th. To August 19th. And now look, this, this circular bullseye has now moved down between Nepal Crater and Huo. So this is really unusual. The normal, if this was a dike that was going down there, there tend to be vertical fill, fillings of magma, and it tends to make an elongate-shaped deformation pattern. This circular pattern suggests that we're deep, um, because it goes way out past the edges of the rift zone. So you have to be kind of down deep to push the rock up. If you're shallow, you can't push very far away from where the deformation is. And it's very symmetrical. So it's like a body that is being filled and then it moved and it started filling. And these are two places historically we've known where magma accumulates. This is one. And then underneath Puo'o over here is another one that we've seen it accumulate in the 1960s and stuff. So we're back to accumulating magma in these places right here. This isn't really getting primed for an eruption, but if you can think after the big 2018 thing, we took a huge amount. We took about 15 years worth of lava storage up in the summit and transferred it down to Puna and out into the ocean. And so what that did was took a kind of a pumped up system where everything was pressurized and it sort of deflated it down. 
And so what we're seeing now is this system re-pumping up and getting magma out into here. So it's starting to pump up so magma can be transported in these sections again now. And uh, just last night, <laughs> starting at 9 o'clock, <laughs> we had another flurry of earthquakes in here. And um, it wasn't as severe as these because we didn't see a lot of magma move from the summit out in here. But something happened in here where magma was moving for about four or five hours last night. Kept us up. We kind of peaked around uh, 2 o'clock at 35 earthquakes an hour in there. And then it kind of calmed down. It's still going on at a low. It's it's idling out there right now. <laughs> so we don't know if it's going to pick back up again or not. And I actually haven't looked at my phone for an hour, so I don't really know if it has or not. But I don't think it has. But, but anyway, that's kind of the state of the volcano right now. And I can show you the... Oops. These are the earthquakes for the last week out here. And so here's Kilauea Caldera. Here's the Upper East Rift Zone. Mauna Ulu right here. This is out towards Makuapui Crater and Nepal Crater right there. And the yellow ones are earthquakes that are uh, one to six days old. Uh, the orange ones are in the last 24 hours and the red ones are in the last eight hours. So it can kind of show you how many earthquakes we've gotten in the last week there. And like I said, these are the locatable ones. The size of the dot is equal to the size of the earthquake. So there's a slew of magnitude two earthquakes out there and a lot of high ones and stuff like that. So this is that's a lot of earthquakes out in there. So um, things are humming still. And, you know, after we've kind of pumped up the Southwest Rift Zone earlier this year and had an eruption there in uh june now we've shifted over to the east rift zone and it's pumping that up right now so we'll just wait and see what happens <laughs> and i think then i'll go to the last slide which looks like there we go <laughs>